speaking with documentary filmmaker Robert Whitey. His new American Masters PBS documentary, Woody Allen, a documentary, three and a half hours total length, shown over two nights, the first two hours, this coming Sunday night, 9 o'clock, PBS SoCal and PBS stations across the country. And then the succeeding 90 minutes the following night, Monday night, also at 9 o'clock on PBS SoCal. We're talking about Woody Allen's and, and the access that he gave to Bob uh, during the making of this film. How long was it working on, on constructing the film? Well, I first approached him in October of 08. The first filming I did was in uh, April of 09. And then I was on his set of You'll Meet a Tall Dark Stranger in uh, August of 09. So that was the first filming I did. And I only wrapped it up really about three months ago. So whatever that is, about two and a half years or so. But, but uh, you know, there was at least half a dozen, maybe six or seven formal sit-down interviews. And then there's the Brooklyn trip. There was filming him in his home as he's writing, uh, filming him in his editing room. I went to Cannes with him twice, uh, once in 2010 and then this year for Midnight in Paris in 2011. And... Um, you know, just sort of trailed him on and off for about a year and a half. I love seeing his his bedroom. You know where he does writing the the, the office with the manual typewriter and yeah, I that, mean all these things about that. Now I can picture him when he writes these scripts, what it looks like with him doing it. It's funny, you know, he doesn't really have a proper office. I mean, he has a place where he goes to every day. That's essentially an editing room and a screening room. And then his receptionist has this desk. And if he needs to make a phone call, he makes it from her desk. You know, he borrows her phone. But where he writes is. In his bedroom, he doesn't. And he has a lovely townhouse on the Upper East Side. You know, there's plenty of room, but uh, you know, he he doesn't have a room set up as an office. He's got his bedroom, and in the corner of his bedroom, as you see in the documentary, there's this little table in the corner, and there's this World War II surplus lamp, this you know, standing bending lamp, and yes, this typewriter that he got when he was 16 years old doesn't even look full size. I mean, maybe, but it didn't even look full size. Well, it's a portable, and what that allowed him to do was travel to Europe and go all over the world with this typewriter because every Everything that he's that he's written in his professional life from the time he was a teenager, sending jokes off to the columnists like Earl Wilson, um, until you know his current film and every New Yorker piece and every play, he's written on this little manual typewriter, and he still has to send somebody out to buy the ribbons for it and replace the ribbons. Isn't and, easy uh, to do, yeah. yeah. Well, I loved his cut and paste methods also for editing. Yes, I asked him. I said, "Well, how do you cut and paste?" As as we in the digital age say, and and what he does is he he cuts and staples literally. Is he will cut out a, a, a part from a page that doesn't need any changes, and then he'll type the changes onto the new page, and then literally staple that piece sure. onto the and I remember and, doing that when I started in the news business when we do a news story and have to go back and re-edit it doing exactly what he described doing with a script so I, I could absolutely picture it we're talking about Woody Allen in the three and a half hour documentary in two parts premiering Sunday night on PBS Robert Whitey the director of the documentary conducts the interviews with Allen and pieces together excerpts from all of his films music from it interviews people who've collaborated with him his stars goes back to his second wife, Louise Lasser, who has a lot to say about what he was like as a very young man. Diane Keaton very prominently featured in it as well. Not surprisingly, we don't hear from Mia Farrow in an interview. Did you approach her about uh, getting her to talk for this? I did. I knew it would be a very tricky, sensitive subject for obvious reasons, uh, but I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt. And uh, you know, I she politely declined through her management, but she read the letter and considered it. And I knew it would be tough because I really didn't want to go down the rabbit hole of all the details about uh, the fallout that she and Woody had 20 years ago. I knew I had to cover it, and I did cover it. But uh, I think it would be very difficult to interview Mia about the films without it slipping into that territory. What she did do is, you know, when you do a film like this, you have to get all the actors who appear in the clips to sign off on your use of the clips. And she could have really hung me up by refusing to do so, but she she didn't. Again, I, I wrote a letter, I made the case, and uh, she she signed off on my use of the clip, so I, I remain very grateful for that. Uh, you do get into the issue of the breakup of their uh, relationship, and particularly when they were just two, three days before the the final scenes. Was it uh, husbands and wives? I'm right, to, yeah, husbands and wives, yeah. So it's just extraordinary to think she could have, that picture could have ended up unfinished or significantly altered if she would have walked away and said, I'm never going to work with you again. Yeah, it was very tough. Bobby Greenhut, who was Woody's producer at the time, who's interviewed in the film, talks about, uh, 
you know, having to get on the phone with me in the middle of all this and convince her to come back uh, to work. But as he says, like a trooper, she did. She came back and finished her job. They were only two or three days away from the conclusion. And even Woody says if they had been weeks away, it might have been a different story. But they got through those few days and finished the film. And then you show the scene that was filmed after she came back, where it's the breakup of the relationship. I mean, this is in real life. She's discovered the news, nude photos of her adoptive daughter in Woody Allen's townhouse and had this incredible revelation. And then just what the next day or two days later, she's back filming this incredibly poignant scene about a breakup. And that that's amazing. Right. It is uh, life imitates art, imitates life, I guess. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very poignant moment. And um, as I say, they, they got through it and finished the film. Bob, my, my final question for you real briefly, one of the things I've been unclear about with Woody Allen is it seems he has this self-deprecating kind of plays down himself as an artist. And yet he so much wants to do more than just make people laugh. And yet that arguably is the greatest single gift he's got, the master of incredible one-liners and humor. So how do you bring those two together? This fact that, that he clearly wants to be the great artist, make this huge artistic contribution, but then doesn't see himself that way. Well, it's a difference, I guess, between intention and the execution. I mean, he, he has very lofty ideas of what he wants to, to do. But I think like any artist, but Woody especially so, is he looks at the finished product and just feels he misses. I mean, it's really a revelation in, in the documentary. Uh, there are very few Woody Allen fans who don't consider Manhattan something of a masterpiece. Incredible film. Yes, and, and uh, Woody looked at the finished film and thought he had blown it so badly that uh, he said to United Artists at the time that he'd do a film for them for free if they would not put it out. So uh, <laughs> it's just astounding. I mean, it shows how, how off he can be. But, uh, you know, I think it comes down to what he has in his mind as some sort of ambition for a given project versus what he winds up with. And we don't see that gap, but for some reason that's all he sees. Bob, it's a terrific film. Thank you very much for talking with us about it. Really appreciate it. Congratulations. Thanks so much, Larry. Robert Whitey, the director of Woody Allen, a documentary premiering Sunday night, 9 o'clock on PBS SoCal and PBS stations nationally. My thanks to our air talk